Did your doctor tell you that you had a deviated nasal septum? In this video, I'm going to debunk three common myths about the nasal septum that both doctors as well as patients perpetuate. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Park, board certified in both ENT and sleep medicine, blogger, speaker, podcaster, and author of the Amazon bestselling book, Sleep Interrupted. In this video, I'm going to update one of my most popular videos from almost 12 years ago called The Deviated Septum Myth. I'll put a link to that particular video below. In that particular video, my main point was that everyone has a crooked or deviated nasal septum to some degree, and that there are likely additional reasons for your stuffy nose or other health problems. But before I go over the three myths about your deviated septum, I just wanted to ask you to support this channel by clicking the thumbs up button below, as well as to subscribe to this channel so that you can be alerted to my most up-to-date content. Let me start off with a quick anatomy lesson about the nasal septum. The nasal septum is a midline wall inside your nose that divides the two sides of your nasal cavity. It's made of cartilage in the front and bone on the bottom and in the back. Both sides are covered with mucous membranes. Opposite the septum on both sides are the nasal side walls with two important structures, the nasal turbinates and small openings that lead into air pockets inside your facial bones called sinuses. When you have allergies or colds, the mucous membranes and especially the turbinates swell up, which causes your stuffy nose. The turbinates also swell and shrink, alternating from side to side every few hours, which is called the nasal cycle. So the more swollen your turbinates or the more crooked your septum, the more you notice the nasal cycle. The turbinates also swell up more when you're laying down, especially on the gravity dependent side, which is the side that's down. Now there are three myths about the nasal septum. The first one is that a deviated septum is caused by trauma. What I learned in medical school was that as the baby comes out of the birth canal, the nose gets crushed. And this makes sense, but there's no evidence behind this claim. This is completely refuted by the fact that babies born via C-section also have deviated nasal septums. And I can argue that these babies may have a higher risk of developing deviated septums after they're born. Early in practice over 20 years ago, I rarely saw deviated septums in older children or early teens. More recently, that changed completely. I was seeing 10 or 11 year olds with severe deviated septums. They had no history of nasal trauma. So what's causing this to happen? It has to do with how modern faces are getting smaller and smaller. I talk about this in my book, Sleep Interrupted, where I point out that a number of various modern practices are contributing to our jaw shrinking with more crooked teeth. When I was growing up, almost no one needed braces. Now it's abnormal not to need braces in our children. These various factors that causes crooked teeth include transitioning to softer diets, bottle feeding, thumb sucking and pacifier use, nasal congestion, and possibly environmental toxins and endocrine disruptors, including fluoride. I realize that you may be surprised that I said fluoride, but that's a topic for another time. One observation that you can make on your own is to look at movie stars from the 1930s to 50s, compare the shape of their faces to the younger celebrities today. Notice that modern faces are much more triangular and narrow and much more pushed back if you look from the side. As a result of our jaws not widening and protruding properly, the teeth get more crowded and more people need braces or extractions, including our wisdom teeth. This is also why some people have nasal humps since the upper jaw didn't grow forward enough. Now, if the roof of the mouth doesn't drop along with the widening of your upper jaws, then the floor of your nose doesn't drop. The nasal septum sits on the top of the floor of your nose. So if the nasal floor doesn't, doesn't drop properly during childhood development, the septum has nowhere to go, so it shifts and buckles to one side like this. The deviated septum is not the only thing that narrows your nose on the inside. The nasal sidewalls are also closer to the septum since the sidewalls move and don't move along with your molars. Lastly, the angle between your midline nasal septum and your nostrils are more narrow, predisposing to caving in whenever you breathe in. This is why breathe right strips can help with nasal breathing in some people. And this takes us to myth number two, that septoplasty operations either work or don't work. I'm sure you hear friends or colleagues rave about the results of their septoplasty operation, while others will tell you that it didn't help at all with nasal congestion. In most cases, I'm willing to bet that a septoplasty procedure was not the only operation performed. 
The other commonly performed procedures include what's called turbinoplasty, which is a generic term meaning modification of the turbinates. There are a number of various different turbinate procedures from very conservative to aggressive. Depending on how appropriately the turbinates were taken care of will also determine how well your septic plasty operation will work. Lastly, one area of the nose that's frequently ignored are the nostrils. I mentioned before that in some people, the nostrils can cave in easily with every breath in. Your surgeon can do a great job with your septum and turbinates, but if your nostrils are still caving in, then you'll still be stuffy. So as you can see, the key to getting good results with any nasal surgery for a stuffy nose is to address all the potential areas of blockage. One simple test that you can do tonight is to use breed right strips along with nasal decongestant sprays such as Afrin, which is a brand name. This will allow your mouth to remain closed, which is important to keep your tongue from falling back. You may also want to experiment with lip taping, which you can read more about in the link below. Be careful about Afrin since it can work too well and you can get addicted to it if you use it for more than a few days. For some people with high blood pressure, Afrin may not be safe. So definitely check with your medical doctor before trying this. The third and last myth is that a septoplasty means that you're having a nose job. This could be true, but not always. A classic rhinoplasty can be done for either cosmetic reasons or for functional reasons. Oftentimes a deviated septum is also part of the external procedure. Sometimes for pure cosmetic reasons, the septum is not touched at all. It really depends on what's being done and for what purpose. I think the confusion here is that you have the word plasty, which implies plastic, which usually is associated with cosmetic surgery. But plastic is not just cosmetic. It also includes any reconstructive or reshaping of any part of the human body. By this definition, then all surgery is plastic surgery. One caveat about rhinoplasty for cosmetic reasons. If you ask your rhinoplasty surgeon to narrow the tip of your nose, then make sure that it's not going to inadvertently lead to your nostrils weakening five to 10 years later. This was a common occurrence after a popular New York plastic surgeon in the 1950s performed his tip narrowing and upturned nose operation for women. Most cosmetic surgeons are now aware of this potential issue, but I still see it happening once in a while. I hope you found this information helpful. If you're suffering from a stuffy nose, try the breathe right trips after the lip taping experiment that I mentioned above and leave me your comments below. Again, please click the like button now as well as to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you're constantly tired and feel sluggish all the time, or if you can't focus during the day, get my free Energize Your Day Starter Guide by clicking on the link below. This is Dr. Stephen Park, helping you to breathe better so that you can sleep and live better. Bye-bye.